How you doing? So uh, I'm Lorcan O'Neill. I'm a software engineer at HubSpot, which once again, if you can read, you can tell. And I'm going to talk to you about local storage and how we can use it to aid and abet the user experience. So what exactly is local storage? Uh, it's an implementation of the storage interface, which is part of the web storage API, which means that it needs to be able to expose a length property along with methods for identifying a key by integer, getting an item by key, setting an, uh, an item using a key and a value, removing an item with a key, and clearing all of the data available for a given set of storage. Uh, it's client-side data storage, so the information in question is never transferred to the server, which makes it dissimilar from how cookies interact with uh, HTTP requests. There's no time to live on the data which is stored, and there isn't an expiration uh, date set on any of this data, and it's stored uniquely per origin, meaning that for a given domain and protocol combination, you'll have a separate set of data. This allows you to have different local storage data when your domain is being served from HTTPS rather than HTTP. Uh, the spec recommends that you have approximately five megabytes per origin, which puts it comfortably ahead of cookies in terms of how much data can be stored. And session storage provides you with similar storage functionality, but the values can be guaranteed to exist beyond the current browser session, which in some cases can be desirable. However, for the purpose of this talk, I'll be talking about local storage. So an example of uh, one way that this can abet or aid a user experience is if a user visits your site and they're filling out a form, but halfway through they become distracted or their browser dies, or any other of a myriad of things happen. And they have to return to your site, and they feel frustrated because they've already put some time into providing you with their data, and you want their data. So I start filling out a form, start adding in my email address, tell them which county I'm from, put in Cork, change my mind, I'm not from Cork, and then unfortunately, my browser dies. <laughs> <laughs> somebody has a different refresh command to what I do. But you can see here when we refresh the page, the form state is being maintained. Change the browser, change the county, go again, and it's still being maintained. And then if we reset it, we can see again that all of it has gone back to normal again, back to the initial state of the form. So there's a few like very basic wrappers that would provide this kind of functionality, which is that we have our set item functionality, which is simply taking a value and putting it in, and then retrieving a value and then the potential to clear the local storage, which is what the reset button is doing in this case. We can simply add change handlers then onto our DOM elements, telling them that when an item is updated, take the value that's present, take an attribute from that DOM element, in this case name, and write an item to local storage with that. Then when we load our form, we can simply iterate through the known values and use them to populate the form when the user arrives on. However, more useful than that would be if we could store object data rather than simple string data. If we can see here that if we try to build an object and then write it into local storage, unfortunately, when we try to retrieve it, it tells us simply what the object uh, string prototype would. We're not able to actually extract any object information from it. So that means the initial implementation is too naive. And what we would actually need to do is wrap our data that we're passing in with json.stringify and then wrap the get item functionality with json.parse. That way, we're able to extract actual JavaScript object information from what we've passed in. So slightly more sophisticated implementation would do exactly that, and then you'd be able to retrieve an object back from your functionality and iterate through that, rather than having to do individual calls for each piece of DOM information. So a slightly more sophisticated uh, usage of this, if you wanted to provide customization for your user, would be an e-commerce site, where you want to be able to interact with unauthenticated users, users you don't have login information for. And one way you could do this is by keeping track of the pages that they've visited using local storage, and then propagate that information back onto the page, render DOM elements, and show them, you've viewed these items while you've been on my site. Maybe you would like to buy them. So in this case, we've got like a fashion site for someone who's got pretty dodgy fashion sense. They've thought about buying a French beret, a woolly jumper, and an Irish scarf. So what we'd have to do is, on page load, extract the page information that's available to us, push that onto a queue, slice the queue if necessary, knowing that we only want, say, the last five items possibly retrieved, and then render these back onto the page as such. So what browsers can you use it on? So local storage is supported on effectively every of the most current versions of browsers. Uh, Opera Mini still doesn't, IE8, no, IE7 doesn't, but if you're worried about IE7, you've got bigger problems than that. <laughs> um, so it's functionally up to date for pretty much any browser that you're going to be coding for in a modern SaaS context. There are a few caveats, though. If you're dealing with Internet Explorer, local storage isn't going to be defined for any files that you're serving from the local file system. They ignore the storage spec, and they actually only store per host name, ignoring the protocol spec that says you're supposed to allow differences for HTTPS and HTTP, and they don't store ASCII characters which have codes under uh, hexadecimal 20. 
Similarly, Safari and iOS have caveats when you're dealing with local storage, where the data in question will occasionally be cleared by the OS. In private browsing mode, you're not actually even able to access local storage. And because it writes local storage data asynchronously rather than synchronously, if you store large amounts in one call, it can cause the browser to freeze. Similarly, there are a few general caveats. If you've got any blockages in place regarding third-party data, you're not going to be able to access local storage. And if you exceed the character limit for a given origin, you'll get a quota exceeded error. So the final thought is, if you're going to play with local storage, wrap it. Thank you very much. <laughs>